Hey guys, thanks, thanks for coming. So let's get started. Uh, okay, so my name is Den Regalado, and I, we're going to be talking about an infusion pump. Uh, we can see it here. Uh, uh, let's uh, talk about the disclaimer first. This is just for educational purposes. Um, all the vulnerabilities what, that we identify, we discuss with the vendor, and uh, they are committed to the 360 days uh, fix. Uh, they, they work with us pretty close, they respond right away, so I really appreciate the vendor around it. And, and we, we cannot disclose those details, we will show obviously the demos, but once um, the vendor is ready with the, with the fixes, we can then publish the details. A little bit about us, when well, we are Simbox, uh, we are an IoT security company. Uh, I work there as a principal security researcher and uh, uh, had the great uh, blessed to be part of, of Great Hack Hacking Book as a co-author and I'm running the um, Hack Defender uh, Academy. Okay, so we're going to be talking about uh, the Infusion Pump Overview, so I'm going to give you guys a quick demo of how it works uh, in case you don't know and uh, why we pick this specific medical device, the, the pump, uh, what is the attacker's goal, the challenges during the investigation, uh, the potential vulnerabilities, uh, obviously we are going to be giving you demos. So, uh, the, the, the vision pump is, first of all, it's very expensive, uh, it's more than $1,000 and you can imagine a hospital, we can see around four, from 400 to 1,000 of these guys sitting in a facility, uh, all of them connecting, we'll see the details. Uh, it is used to deliver fluids, uh, medications, uh, blood, etc., to the adults, pediatric and neonatal uh, patient, patients. So uh, it just goes all around the hospital and then they just plug this guy. Uh, I'm gonna show you in a second. So you will see a bag, you know, and then the, in the other side, this is gonna be connected through the human uh, arm. And they're gonna start doing the, the fluids and it's automated and that's the main thing that you can program and say, okay, 50 milliliters for the next two hours, you leave it there and it's gonna start feeding the liquids. And if there is some issues, can you imagine that, for example, if it is insulin and it's request to have 100 milliliters, let's say, and for some reason it's just giving 50 milliliters, it's not enough, so the patient is gonna be not doing good in health, or in the opposite side, if you put more than expected, it's also something that you don't wanna have. Um, so let me just quickly show you, uh, I'm gonna be switching back and forth here. Uh, I'm just gonna turn it on and show you how it works. So th these are the main components I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe all of them. This is the main uh, unit. This is running the operating system. We're gonna talk about the operating system. In the left side is the actual pump. So this pump, here is, in, this guy is the one who's gonna have the, the bag with the liquid. And then in the other side, you are gonna have uh, the, the, the connecting to the, to the patient, okay? Uh, let's just turn it on. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see it, but at least so that you have an idea. I'm gonna put it in the back so that we can also talk about details. So it's gonna put it up. Uh, this specific pump, you can have two in each side, so you can program many different infusions. And once it boots up, it is pretty, um, it's pretty simple. It's gonna ask you for a new patient. You are gonna see these devices going all around the hospital and then eventually if it is a new patient, you say yes, a new patient, you create a new profile, or if it is not a new patient, it will not load you the profile of that specific person with all the medication listed for that guy. And then uh, it has some options here obviously to go around and, and to do some configurations. It's really, really limited. You cannot change anything here. You need an external software connected to the serial cable to do some changes. So for example, Wi-Fi connection has a Wi-Fi card in the back, and that's uh, something that you need to uh, do through a software. You cannot do it here. This is just read-only. Uh, but let's go to the example of, um, of an infusion, okay? So the, the person is gonna come, is gonna click here, is gonna say, okay, what I'm gonna do, let's do a basic infusion. So then here you're gonna put, in very important, the rate uh, per milliliters per hour, and then you're gonna put the VTVI, which is the vol volume to be infused, liquid to be infused, 
And just, just to, to do some quick test. So let's say we, we put 50, and then here we put uh, a, ro a total of 200. And then we click Start. And then the infusion pump starts working. And that infusion pump is going to start feeding those 50 uh, per hour uh, but in a total of uh, 200, uh, total amount 250 per hour. That's pretty, pretty simple. That's obviously it's not working because we don't have the bag, but that's the basic idea of the functionality. Let me just, uh, I'm going to turn it on, turn it off, sorry. So that's the main functionality of, of a pump. So let's see what we can do uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a malicious way. So why we pick infusion pumps? It is expected to be uh, worth 10 billion by 2020 year in the market. So that means there's going to be explosion of these pumps. It's so it's important for us to, to understand what is inside. Uh, this specific device is one of the leaders in the world. So that means you can find it everywhere. Next time you, when you go to the hospital, you will, you will see it. Uh, it's important to proactively uh, identify vulnerabilities. Uh, so what is the attacker's goal of this guy, right? So obviously, if there is sensitive information inside, uh, like PII data, so like, you know, congressman, which is dealing with cancer, uh, or unfortunately, the congressman that is dealing with brain cancer right now. So you don't want to know about that, right? But someone breaks into this, they can use it uh, in, in a malicious way. Uh, hijack devices, of course, this can be also ransomware based. It's running a Linux, we will see details of that. So you can hijack it, you can ask for ransomware, uh, and obviously you can disrupt it so it doesn't work anymore, the patient doesn't get attended, uh, and it's bad. And of course, uh, you can also use the pump to break into the LAN. So this can be a bridge to break into the network and from there to the whole devices. Not about medical devices, can be anything connected to, to, to the access point. Keep in mind, that this device connects to an access point. So if you are able to break to the access point through this device, you can get access to the network also. And obviously, the most important thing that I, I think is, is the case here is, is the human, right? If you find a way to alter the behavior, then you can be uh, infusing liquid that can harm a human, which is something that we don't want to know. I don't know if I'm not a doctor, but probably you can kill them. I, I don't know, probably. Uh, okay, main challenge. It's very important to mention that these guys, is a black box. We just get it. Uh, we just get it in, in the package. We don't know what it is. We started working on it. Uh, we realized that uh, in order to interact with this guy, it runs a real-time operating system. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, but just to debug it, it's a $5,000 debugger. So, uh, and plus, it doesn't work through JTAG. This guy supports JTAG. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, but in order to interact with this, you need to have an Ethernet connection to the board, and it costs $5,000. Even with this guy, we cannot interact with the debugger that is developed by INEA. Uh, it comes with an image, Linux image, real-time real -time operating system, fully stripped binary. So that means that you won't see uh, anything. Like here is 35-ish thousand functions, only numbers. Uh, there is nothing, no functions names. You don't know anything about it. It's ARM. So uh, it's very good, good um, coding practice, uh, security practice from the vendor that uh, it is fully stripped. It's very hard. And plus, they have error handling. So every time I crash something here, it just shows me error message, one, two, three, four, five. And it doesn't give me a stack trace. It doesn't give me any details. So that's, that's a good practice. Okay, so let's talk quickly about the architecture. So this guy runs an Intel Xscale. This is very funny because Xscale was from Intel, then Intel sold it to Marvel, uh, and it was pretend to run a strong ARM, but then they switched it to ARM40, which is uh, the version that is running right now. Uh, it has models that run with the system on a, on a chip, which is just a, a small chip running everything inside. Uh, here is the data sheet. Uh, so, but basically, this guy, is able to run Windows and Linux because uh, it was based on Intel and then switched into the, into the uh, ARM architecture. Here is a little bit details of, the, of this uh, uh, internals. So here is the JTAG that I mentioned so that you can interact with the processor. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, with that debugger that I mentioned, you cannot do it through JTAG. 
Uh, here is the PC card. This is very important, guys. Inside the, the pump, uh, probably you will see it here in a second. It uses this uh, small compact flash card. That compact flash card, is, as, as you can see, is, is mentioned here. So that one is going to be able to, uh, to boot the operating system. The operating system is inside that card, which means uh, you, can, you can play around it. We will see how. Uh, obviously, it has LCD, it has uh, RAM, it has DRAM, and it has a flash uh, RAM also that uh, we, we will see how we can play with that. Okay. So this, it runs what is called real-time operating system. A real-time operating system is a, a system that needs to support uh, deadlines, which means, for example, a really good example is an airbag in the car, right? So if there is uh, something in the car that the airbag needs to be triggered right away, it must be done immediately. The, it cannot be a delay of one or two seconds. It must be on real time. That's the reason of these architectures that airbags or ABS in the cars or those specific critical uh, systems, uh, they need to react right away. That's the purpose of real-time operating systems. Uh, this specific company, INEA, is the creator of this real-time system. It's a Linux-based ARM system. And it, it is all around. It is in medical, it is in uh, industry, it is in uh, automotive, it is all around different industries, uh, industrial CS also. Uh, and as I said, it must meet a deadline, otherwise it's a problem. Uh, another details, uh, this specific architecture, only one process run at a time. We will see that in a second. And here is a second thing that I found inside, which is called Flash FX. This is a genetic block device driver, which is basically the interface between the system and the hardware. But the good thing about this, from security perspective, is that this specific Flash driver allows you to talk to the Flash, which is in the chip, as a as a normal uh, mount drive. So, which means uh, this facility allows you to easily play with the Flash instead of doing it uh, in a in a, in a hard way. Obviously, as expected, the flash stores sensitive information like credentials to get access to the network, to get access to the access points. So there's something stored in, in those kind of a flash as usual. Very interesting, there is a file system manager called Tequila. So I don't know why they call it that way, but it, it, and I Google it. There is no information about that Tequila, but basically it's just a file system manager for this flash FX. So that really motivates me when I was doing this research, because uh, it's from Mexico, you know, right, Tequila? <laughs> OK, here is the compact flash card. This is the card that I mentioned. It is inside the pump. This guy that you are seeing there is right here. It is this exactly. Inside it is the flash, the compact flash. This is exactly this one. Uh, and it runs, as I said, the INEA OC system. It stores uh, medica, medical information, like the profiles of the different uh, um, patients, like the medications per patient. Uh, and here is some content. Uh, obviously, some of it I removed. It has some firmware there. Here is the uh, binary, the ELF binary that I talked talk to you, the real-time operating system. This guy comes with the kernel and the application running this guy. So this has a, it's a seven megabyte file, fully stripped symbols, so you can imagine it's very hard to, to, to deal with it. Uh, here is more information about the patient profiles, uh, some information about the configuration of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the pump. And here is the auto run. This guy, this auto run, when this guy boots, it will read the auto run and then it will execute whatever it is inside. Okay, so the auto run stores the command to, to boot up this guy, right? So since we have access to the flashcard, we can play with that. So, it performs an integrity check, which means that when you run this operating system, it will do an integrity check to make sure it's not altered. And here is the first vulnerability that we found, a way to bypass the integrity check. Uh, at this point, we cannot release the details, but the main thing is that we can alter that Linux binary. We can alter it and then start playing with it. Uh, what are the consequences of that? So I prepared a quick demo for you guys so that you can see uh, how how it should work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch. Uh, this is the original compact flash card. And I'm going to just switch it with this one. This one comes 
with the bypass of that real-time real operating system. It comes with some modifications. Let's see what are those modifications and what would be the consequence. Let me just. So you need to plug this in very, very uh, careful because otherwise it won't run and I already burned many different cards. So okay, so let's start it up. Probably you can see something around it. So the first thing that you can change is just the boot up. Here is where you can put a ransomware message. That's obviously one of one case, right? You can put a ransomware, pay me Bitcoin money, and, and then it doesn't boot up, and then you get scared people, it doesn't work, and then you can start playing with that. So that's because we, have the, we, we, we modify the boot, 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 prof, boot process. Uh, now, once inside, one of the things that is very important is here in the options. Uh, in order to see the network status of the pump, you need to enter a PIN number. Uh, by default, uh, if you go and Google it, it's, it's a 32211 for something like that. It's the default one. But since we are able to modify it, uh, we can change it to whatever we want. So for example, my number, my favorite number is 777. So, so I just change it to 777 here. And I don't care what is the number, right? Because I just go, go to the image, find that specific pin where it's stored, and you just replace it with whatever I want. And that gives you access to the configuration. You can see here that the pump is trying to associate with a default Wi-Fi, right? So it's something that is already inside, it's already in the ROM. We cannot touch it, we cannot change it. Uh, but at least we know the SSID. Later we can see that how we can modify this. So, this is another example, right? You can change pin numbers, you can change, change sensitive access to the pump, but let me show you the most interesting one. So if you remember the infusion pump, right, when it is the setup, when you put the uh, rate and you put the volume to be infused. So let's do it again. So here, if you notice something different, I just put it purposely. I just changed to pr Primera in Spanish, the front, the form, uh, just to show you that you can change this front. But not only that, because I can change the screens, I can, I, what I did, I, I switched between the rate and the VTI. So basically, the rate is in the bottom and the VTI is in the up. You, you see that? So what that means is that if someone comes, and, and let's do it again, someone comes and they want to prepare the infusion, they're going to say, okay, let me enter the rate, and I don't know, let's say 50, and then they are going to say, okay, so the duration might be uh, three hours, for example. So what is happening here is that we are entering the rate, but the rate is actually the VTI, and the VTBI is the rate, you know, you know, you know what I mean? So we swap it. So check it out when I say uh, start. It says 50 here, but it's actually infusing 14. So because it got confused, and then what you are infusing is not exactly what the pump is trying to infuse. Also, if you notice something that I didn't test it yet, when we did it properly, it was giving us an error, right? It was flashing. Right now it's not flashing, it's working. So uh, I cannot do it in humans, but if there is a volunteer, we can test it, and uh, we can see what happened. But the point here is that because we can, uh, we can modify the integrity of the Linux uh, system, we can play with the, with the, also with the forms, and then we can change them, and the infusion pump at the end is gonna do whatever we want, but at, as you can see here, it is, it is in the opposite way. Let me just put this back. So these are just some examples of what you can do. Obviously, if you have time, we can, we can change everything. We can change the front end, uh, so that you can, you, can, you can do that. So here is what I said. Uh, this is the, the modified version, and here is the original one. One second. <laughs> this guy. Okay, so here you can see, guys, in the right side is the original version. You remember it was the right here, the VT, VTBI, uh, 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 and here is the way it works. In the right side, I just changed this title just to make it evident. But the most important thing is here, the swap here. 
I change the VTVI for the rate, which means the person who is entering here is entering the opposite way. So that way is going to influence the, the, the behavior of the pump. And, and that's just because of, of the integrity, OK? So let's move to the next one. So here is some commands uh, that are found that you can use. It's basic Unix-related commands. But those Unix commands can help you to do uh, a, a lot of stuff. So you can, you can do mem copies. You can do formats. You can do uh, mem dumps. You can, you can dump the flash. Uh, you can uh, run this guy specifically here. It's Rex scripting language. I don't know if you guys heard about Rex scripting language before. It's like a Perl, but I never heard before. It's one of those weird things running in this kind of devices. But that one can help us to actually do more stuff, because we don't need to play with ASM assembly. We can play with just a Perl script, like Perl script. Uh, here is what I was telling you. This, this is the process running inside. As you can see, there is just one process running at a time. When I run PS, it is the one running right now, and the other ones are in receiving or uh, uh, delay mode. Uh, here is the PXCA status that I show you. Uh, we confirm that it is an ARM system. Uh, it is in super supervisor mode. It is the Intel manufacturer, even though now it's Marvel uh, and the version. And here is the most important thing, guys. So we found that uh, we found a way to, to read the flash uh, without without using any any chip related. Okay, that's very important because it's easier. Uh, in the chip, we identify that in the left side there is all the credentials to connect. This guy talks to a server in order to do uh, um, heartbeats and in order to exchange information. So that is here, and it is in plain text the AES key. AES keys, plain text, the credentials are there, so which means you can use this to uh, decrypt information from this guy and the server. But also, in the right side, we can see, you remember the Wi-Fi configuration is here. So that means is that we know what is the credentials, and then we can do two things. We're going to describe that. Uh, but by doing this information, we cannot change this guy but we can change it through our uh, interaction. So the first thing that attacker can do, obviously, is to uh, gain access to the network. So he knows the credentials. He knows the SSID. I just need to go and, and plug in, in uh, to the radius. I just log in and get access to the same LAN segment where this guy is running. That's the first thing. Uh, and you can attack other hosts, right? So you go, uh, you, retrieve, re you retrieve the cards. Um, Wi-Fi information as we display the, the information. Then you connect to the corporate access point, and then you can start reaching other different uh, assets within the network. That's the first thing. The second thing is man in the middle, which means uh, we can impersonate the access point. Since we know the configuration file, and we find a way to override the ROM, uh, the, the, the internal ROM uh, memory, sorry, we can reconfigure this guy and say, hey, don't forget about that. Connect to me. Uh, as, I, as I said, there are from 400 to 1,000 of these devices in a network. So you can either man in the middle them, or you can just talk, ask them to talk to you so that you can uh, start dec decrypting the information. So this would be the scenario, right? So you have the rock IP, you reconfigure them, and then you can, you can actually ask them to talk to you, either by using the same SSID so that they reach out to you if you are closest to the access point. Uh, or you can just replace the full Wi-Fi configuration. So let's see how that works. So th that's, that's going to be my last demo. So I'm going to replace again. This is the flashcard. This flashcard, what it's going to do is, at boot time, it's going to go and replace the configuration of uh, the, the Wi-Fi and to put our own configuration. And in the left side, I have a router, which is already configured with our own access point. And the intention is that this guy is going to connect to us. Let, let's see. So we just flip this guy. Just give me one second.
So normally, if you don't, if you don't connect this properly, the Wi-Fi is going to just stop working. It's a lot of problems. So hopefully, it works now. So I'm going to turn this guy on. And then it's going to start booting up. During the boot up process, it's going to replace the configuration file. And probably you don't see that at the beginning. It says, if you remember, the SSID was default, uh, adult. So let's see now. So it says new patient, we go the same thing. Let me show you the Wi-Fi configuration. Again, it asks us for the access, the need, but we already replace it. You can see that now it's trying to authenticate to Simbox inside, which means we replace the, 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 the configuration with our own one. And now, if we have an access point with this uh, SSID, it will connect to us. So let me do it right now. So I have here my, my access point with my radius. What is going to happen is that as soon as I boot it up, uh, it's going to say associated here. Let's see. So we have here. So here is my radius. The radius is running now. Uh, it is going to start processing requests. It's going to take some seconds to hopefully uh, get this guy authenticated because he's retrying and retrying and retrying. So let's see uh, if it pick it up there. It's going to take like probably 10 seconds around, or 15, or 20. <laughs> let's see. Oh, what is the? It is authenticating, yeah. Okay, it's trying to disassociate it. Let me check something. Let me just quickly check if, if I am connected to the, to the pump. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. Okay, let's see. Okay, it is now it's receiving information and uh, it's associated. You see that here? It says associated. And now let's go to the net address. And I got a, an address that I assigned to the, to the pump. So at this point, it is not stable. You can see it is flipping. It's going to get the access, access the IP once again and again because it is trying to connect to the, to the server. Since it is not server, it's trying to authenticate again and again and again. But as you can see, we are giving it the IP address. So as soon as we have the established connection with the server, so we are able to just replace whatever we want and then take it to us, do money in the middle. But at the end of the day, the most important thing here is that we can uh, fully replace the, the, the configuration store in, in, in the internal RAM. <coughs> OK. So this is what we just saw. Uh, we saw that uh, we got associated, and we got the IP address, so which is, is uh, confirms that we can replace it. Uh, find the summary, uh, we talk about the integrity check bypass, where we can change the forms, we can change the pin numbers, and we can keep playing, right? It's up to us to whatever we want to change, because at that point, the, the file can be altered. Uh, we talk about changing those settings, of course, the Wi-Fi settings. We talk about uh, changing the infusion setup uh, to affect the clients, you know, change the VTVI with the rate, and that can confuse. Execute commands in the internal shell, uh, which can be used to destroy this guy completely, uh, and impersonate, obviously, the access point with our own, or either we impersonate it, or we just put our own so that they can connect to us. And override the flash memory internal one, as I said, which means it's persistent. So my change that I do here, since it goes in the internal RAM, that means that if someone comes and just get this guy out and load a new compact flash card, the change remains because it's stored in the, in, in, in the internal RAM. It's persistent. And you're going to say, OK, so this is physical access. Yes, it's physical access, but just talk about, let's think about some examples. The ATMs, 
they are always hacked physically. And it is uh, $500 million being stolen, and it keeps doing it. So which means is that, uh, and also another thing is that this just takes two seconds, two minutes and five seconds to boot it up, so you can sweep the, the compact flashcard. But the most important thing, guys, is that we need to assume that it's going to be a physical attack. So we, we don't need to say, oh, it is a physical attack, and that doesn't work. It's the, internal, the insider threats are more bigger than the outsiders. And also, we need to assume someone is going to get access here. If we assume that someone has physical access, we need to think about how we can protect these guys. That's the main point. Uh, next steps. Uh, this is just a starting point. Obviously, now we got, we got the associated point. We have an IP address. We can talk to this guy. So our next step in this research is now the remote attacks to start playing with remote uh, information. That's then our next phase. We can play with the Rex scripting language that I set to help us to create uh, rats or reverse shells. I found actually an implementation of this Rex, Rex scripting language that is running this guy. One guy already implemented it in an IBM mainframe. So it's, it's totally doable. Uh, this is called hooking. That's very advanced because this guy doesn't have uh, symbols. So, but what you can do here is that you can intercept the calls of the BTI, the rate, and in memory change it on the fly, which is very hard, but it's possible with time. We're going to try to do that. And finally, uh, we're going to understand this at DCMP protocol. The CM DCMP protocol talks from, with the pump and with the server. We're going to try to understand it and see how it works at Decoded. And, uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you so much.